All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening. This is Mini Falafel with a really nice tutorial, in my opinion, about how to make procedural electricity with Blender. So this, uh, I'm just gonna pull up this video to show you kind of what we're expecting. It's pretty short, so it might not, yeah, show before it loads. Yeah, okay, that, that wasn't great. But this is kind of what it looks like, right? Pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make it. So uh, just pull up Blender. So you have a, a new scene, destroy the default cube and make a plane, tab into edit mode, and then I just merge at center so I have a single vertex, or you could add that modifier that lets you do that automatically at a single vertex. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is just extrude on the Z by about four, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, hook the new, or the ends to new object, do that. And then the middle two, this is optional, but I like having the control of the center of the arc because um, this, instead of being a plane, we're actually going to rename it now, is going to be electric arc. And then obviously we're going to move this to a new scene called electricity. Obviously, yes, clearly. And then move all of these two to that electricity collection. And then I'm going to rename these. You don't have to, but arc base. And uh, what's that? Arc end. Then this one, arc, middle. All right, cool. So now if we just kind of move this stuff around, you can kind of see that it, it controls it. But after we have all these hook modifiers, we actually want to add a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, up that to however many you want. I, I don't really care a whole lot. <laughs> but um, make sure that it's the same in your uh, viewport as it is in your render. And then after the subdivision surface modifier, we're gonna add a skin modifier. That's to give the bolt some thickness. Uh, so in order to make this not super thick, we're gonna tab into edit mode, select all the vertices. And just so you can see, I've selected all the vertices. I'm gonna turn on wireframe anyway, and then hit control A, and that'll let you scale the uh, size of each vertex, which is kind of a weird shortcut in my opinion, but make sure that's really thin because Obviously, electricity is pretty thin, and uh, with the displacement, it might look a little thicker. But now we have this, and it's got some thickness, and it like curves and stuff. And you kind of have control over where it is. So this is pretty close to pretty much the base of everything. Here, let me just, for the sake of uh, OCD, turn that to individual origins. Turn that, I'll just make them not so big because I don't like when they're <laughs> giant. Anyway, after the skin modifier, add a displacement modifier. Actually, you know what we could do? We could move the skin modifier down below the displacement modifier. Uh, this one we're gonna call uh, swooshy. Cool, yeah, we're gonna turn this to global coordinates and uh, going to put this in the X direction because we're going to call this X disp for X displays and then go to the texture editor make this clouds yeah that actually looks a little bit better <laughs> all right turn up the scale quite a bit because we want you know we want that to be very nice all right um now one other thing we're going to add a vertex group really quick of all of these center vertices just add a vertex group called uh arc middle uh, and then assign these just so that we only apply this uh, displacement modifier kind of to the middle right that way we have these hooks are actually lining up with where they're supposed to be instead of like sticking off to the side because that would be really frustrating anyway well this is only applying to the x-axis so now obviously we need to duplicate this modifier two times or, I mean, if you want to do it four times, you can, or two, but I would say what's wrong with you. Uh, and then obviously change these accordingly. Uh, oops. And I'm going to rename this disp and that right there. All right, cool. Now you kind of have this uh, changing arc right here, and this, these hooks really control this. And that is really at its base, kind of what this is except we're going to add a couple more things that'll definitely add to its realism. Um, first of which, I'm gonna shade this thing smooth. Uh, I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. All right, whatever, it's fine. Um, what I'm gonna do instead is up the subdivision surface. I don't know. Make it look nice, really. 
All right, cool. So you, you have this really nice electric looking thingy. Obviously, its materials aren't super electric looking, but it does look, it has that nice shape that we want. So now what do we do? We'll turn off that because that's really annoying. <laughs> uh, select some bottom vertices, and we're going to make one more vertex group called, uh, maybe you called it, but I don't know if you did, particle density, right? All right, cool. And then we'll assign, deselect them all, and then go to the particles, add a new particle system, and we'll call this arc children. Make this like 200 particles. I don't know, depending on how many you want. Uh, if our animation is 250 frames long, we'll do 250. Uh, you know, we'll make this 100 frames long with 250. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, all right, and then the lifetime, we don't want to be very high at all. Three at max. All right, we're going to click Use Modifier Stack because if we don't, then the particles are going to all spawn in at the base and stuff where we don't actually want them to spawn in. So uh, with Modifier Stack uh, applied, we can go to Velocity. No, not Velocity. We want Rotation. And uh, just click Randomize. <laughs> Randomize the velocity. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, um, now in render, we're going to go to none. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, all we have to do is duplicate this electric thingy, remove these hook modifiers. Uh, in edit mode, scale them on the, or scale this thing on the Z down so that it's kind of small. Right, okay. And now, obviously remove this particle system because we don't want this particle system on the children arcs unless you want like child of child arcs which I mean sure I'm not judging anyway um, now we want to add a particle instance modifier we're gonna actually move this all the way up to the very top and one last thing that I'm gonna do before I continue is scale this arc down uh, even more because again it's like a little branch off of the main one so it's gonna be thinner it's not gonna be so thick uh, maybe a bit bigger all right, cool. All right, so, uh, oh, electric tutorial. <laughs> I didn't realize I hadn't saved, which is not a good thing. And uh, you could probably tell I've done this before because I have been interrupted multiple times. Anyway, so we're going to uh, copy this thing's particle system. We're going to check regular and size, uncheck those, and turn up the amount all the way so that we have those particles showing. Now, obviously, that's that's really screwed up, right? <laughs> because if we go into this thing's particle settings, which I probably should have caught earlier, we want to add the density of our text group, right? So that it's only coming from that part. And obviously turn down the amount because, wow, that's a lot. I mean, unless you want a lot, but... You know, I'm not here to judge. Um, okay, now one last thing that we have to do in this thing is add some modifiers called shrink wrap modifiers. And these are just going to, so if we go into here, we're obviously going to be adding a couple more vertex groups. That's what it's called. Um, arc, base. Uh, and the reason why I'm calling them base and end is because really I, it's just a way to differentiate them. I guess they're pretty much the same thing, though, having a differentiation between. The two is really nice, so assign that one, and then select this one, and then assign that one, and there we go, we're done. All right, cool. So then in the shrink wrap modifier, we're going to, obviously, first of all, we want one of them to be shrinking to whatever this is, um, and then the other one, we're just going to add a plane to scale it out, and then this thing is going to, uh, we're just going to duplicate this modifier, and then have this shrink wrap there with the arc end being the thing so then all of these are going to do that and wow that looks like crap <laughs> yeah that's not look great anyway um one thing that i could do to actually make this look a little bit better is scale this up in edit mode but then scale it down in this mode just so that the stuff is a little it's not like if it's reaching up there, it's not, you know, anyway. <laughs> uh, maybe you don't know, but that, that's okay. I don't really care if you know or not. Um, we're going to scale this up a bit. Just, I don't know, make it look like it's like it's there. Uh, fly this camera around, make it see stuff. Uh, scale it up a bit more. Obviously save. Um, and then in here, we're going to start working on materials. So 
Actually, no, we should not work on materials because now that I think about it, we have a couple of things to add. So first of all, this is this one's going to be pretty easy. We just select this thing. We hit I, insert location. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're going to add some modifiers to its graph in the graph editor, uh, to its animation curve. And uh, that's just so that it looks more noisy. <laughs> so yeah, add a noise modifier. Uh, right now it's currently just applied to the X axis. Oh goodness, that is, that is murder on the eyes. I'm gonna just hide that so that you can actually kind of see what's going on there. Anyway, obviously up the scale because uh, when stuff is kind of arcing around, it's not so crazy and wild, but then we up that. Yeah, all right, cool. So now it's just gonna look a little bit more natural. We're gonna copy this modifier and, and then uh, duplicate it right over to the Y axis, but then add some phase so that it's different. Same thing with the Z, add some phase so that it's different. And then we're gonna do that. Wow, that's cool. Wow. <laughs> now, one other thing, because we want this to kind of, this empty, to um, stick to the plane, we're gonna add a shrink wrap modifier to the plane. And then it's gonna kind of just curve around on the plane. Maybe actually turn up that scale a bit, quite a bit. Just so that it's not so wildly, you know. Anyway, now other thing that we're gonna do, this one's gonna kind of be a little bit more crazy. Uh, this one definitely, I guess it could be exactly the same and I don't really, yeah, anyway, <laughs> you, you have to have data on the graph in order to have it work with the modifiers so you no matter what have to add a keyframe whether it be staying the same the entire time or whether you want it animated anyway scale this up uh the other one was like 50 or something and then this was like seven or something anyway and then that should be good except we want this one to also have phase because otherwise it's going to be moving at the exact same rate as the other one so we're just going to copy this paste it over to the other modifier thingies whoops no, <laughs> copy, paste, uh, okay, cool, and now it should kind of just, maybe if we if we want to on the z-axis, we should just not have a modifier, just, just for the sake of, you know, anyway, uh, now we're going to move this one around quite a bit, this one's going to get a little wild, it's going to kind of just you know, uh, I mean, really, honestly, you can do whatever you want with this, um, but personally, I'm going to just make it go crazy, you know, Be because I'm cool like that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, make sure there's variation in all of these again. It, it's pretty important, actually. But then this thing, again, on the... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want that much strength with this thing, because it's going to be a bit crazy. Like it more crazy than I really want. All right, cool. Uh, now if we go back to the animation, yeah, look at that. It looks like it, it looks electric and stuff, and you can see this kind of arcing down, touching the plane, which actually really looks epic. <laughs> it looks so cool. I like it. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for the animation of it. So we're just gonna add some materials, which obviously for electricity, uh, let's just select this main material. We're gonna call it electric. And for the electricity, we don't want to waste any um, computation power, so we're just going to add a straight emission shader. Change that to like a slightly purplish color, right? And then up the strength about 200, because uh, that, that's really nice to have. And if you really want to, you can go into render view. And uh, if you're using Eevee, which I would not recommend, I, I don't know why, I just don't really like Eevee that much, uh, because everything looks better in cycles unless you're going for a cartoony look. Um, anyway, now we select these and we just give it the exact same material. And uh, now you have this kind of really cool looking ele electricity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does look pretty cool. You, you can't deny that. Anyway, yeah. Um, so we're pretty much done with that. So let's just add a new material called this floor. And what I'm going to do, because this is what I used for the um, example, is give this thing a floor material over here. No, 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 I just wanted to select both of you. Not 55, like something like that. There we go. And then, uh, yeah, we have a floor. Now, the reason why I don't like doing this in EV is because you can see that this is casting a shadow. And in cycles, you can actually pretty easily disable that by just clicking on the 
Not the plane. <laughs> give, me, give me the arc. Okay, there we go. Uh, actually, where is it? Electric arc. Let's call this child the arc because I forgot to organize that. Anyway, uh, all we have to do is go into object, object, object properties, visibility, ray visibility, uncheck shadow, and then do the exact same thing for the other one. Uncheck shadow, and then you're done. And then it doesn't cast a shadow. But I mean, really, you shouldn't in the first place anyway. All right, now one last thing that I'm gonna do is just add an HDR. Just uh, I'm gonna make like really, really low strength, like 0.1 or maybe even 0.05. But it's gonna just be a regular HDR. I don't. Uh, it's just gonna be dim so that it looks kind of like stuff is underexposed. You know. Uh, this is my new HDR folder, so I don't have anything else in it really. So we just select that. Oh, even that's too strong. 0.5. Maybe something like that. All right, cool. Now, the the one problem that comes with cycles is that you don't get that uh, this little bloom effect that comes with Eevee, like in the look dev and everything. Uh, so the way that we fix that is here. I'm just going to render like a two sample image really quick, just so that we can do some compositing. And I can like show you what compositing looks like. Obviously, this is casting a lot of light, which is really kind of nice. <laughs> wow, two samples. <laughs> that was worse than I expected for no reason. I don't think I've ever rendered at two samples before. That's crazy. Oh, goodness. All right. We're going to just grab this and bing bong. All right, cool. So the, the only thing that we really need to do is add a filter, glare. Ta-da! Actually, it's not doing anything. I, I prefer fog glow over the streaks, but what you can do is actually, like, uh, have kind of, like, a mix of both of them. But, oh, goodness, that looks crazy. Looks whack. Uh, maybe it's a bit too purple. I think it is, really. Um, so, just, like, right about there. All right, cool. And then, yeah. <laughs> that's it, ta-da, that, yeah, that's really it. You just have this kind of thing. Now, what I like to do sometimes for these effects is turn up the mix all the way, and then kind of just move this down. Add a color mix, come on. And then change it to add really quick. So it, it gives the exact same effect, but if you want to, you can actually have more than one type of glare over here. So if I were to like over here and add streaks or something then you would have both types and then that looks terrible but <laughs> that's not the point i'm showing you you can do both but um anyway and then you can add like depth of field and stuff if you want but that's pretty much it for the electricity it, it looks nice uh, and i just figured i'd show you how to make that glow because that's kind of the part that's missing if you switch to cycles from eevee but again it's like really really easy to add in um because, yeah, it's epic like that. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> like the video if you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, yeah, also, maybe subscribe. That, that'd be nice.